thank you everyone for, for attending this presentation. So we will be talking now more on the software side of things. So the title is Next Generation Design Software for 3D Printed Aerospace Components. So let, let me just introduce myself real quick. Alejandro Carcel Lopez, Application Engineer at Entopology. My background is in aerospace engineering. I've worked in propulsion systems integration in design aspects, stress, thermal and ventilation. And currently I am enabling uh, high innovation in mechanical engineering for several industries, among which still aerospace. And to start this, um, before jumping right into software aspects of design for additive manufacturing, I just want to give you a quick overview of how our design and manufacturing methods have been evolving constantly. So what you see here is a Rocketdyne uh, F1 engine that was used in the Saturn V in the Apollo mission back in the 50s up to the 70s. It's amazing to think the fact that this Ex extremely complex uh, component that we haven't been able to remanufacture yet at the same power was designed without any software. Everything was pure trial and error. Everything was uh, sketched, then they would manufacture the prototypes, assemble them, test them, and keep building on this basis. So we can achieve quite amazing things with some uh, goodwill and with uh, uh, very good engineers, but of course that means a lot of resources and, and maybe the world doesn't have the same resources as back then as we all know uh, to put so much people working into this so, for so long. So we, we found more efficient, way, more, more efficient ways of, of doing engineering by actually testing those assemblies and simulating them in CAD software, which, is, which has facilitated a lot the development of more advanced systems. Finally, now we have new manufacturing techniques that allows us to not have to assemble certain components because we can incorporate all of those functionalities directly into one single component. So here we see a modern concept of a rocket nozzle that incorporates the graded ribbing and the conformal cooling channels inside the same structure without the need of assembling things like a cooling jacket or uh, rings for ribbing. However, the truth is that designing complex geometries for additive manufacturing is quite challenging. Especially, let's say that you've put a lot of effort uh, with your CAD software in getting this design uh, that, you know, you, as, as I said, has these internal um, cooling channels. It has these conformal ribs that are graded. They are thicker in the regions of high temperature and thinner as we move outside of the nozzle when the uh, gases have cooled down. Okay, so we're happy with this design, but if we truly want to study this concept, we, we probably are going to need to do some design variations. We're going to want to play with the thickness of the ribs, the density, the distribution, those cooling channels, the, the internal structure, the, the pore size or, or, the, or the pipes, the diameter. There's so many variables that we can play with, no? And, and investigate things like pressure drop, a structural behavior, thermal expansion. And I, I guarantee you, if you take this model and you start trying to do updates to it, to quickly evaluate the different possibilities, it's going to take quite a long time. But not only that, it's going to take a long time. And when you come back after hours or, or even half a day of recomputing your, your model, your very complex model, you might find the terrible surprise that nothing got computed because there were too many errors while generate, regenerating that model. So this is not an easy problem really when we think about the classic design tools that we have been using because they were not created for this type of modeling when we created CAD software back then, which is extremely useful these days, of course, but it was not really meant for this sort of design. So we truly need some disrupt disruptive software technology that follows the advantages that uh, addictive manufacturing capabilities have given us. So we can keep working with, you know, our CAD software, those assemblies and, and, and the functionality of, of everything and, and provide our engineering and process knowledge, but we need to bring those to a adapted tool 
for design for additive manufacturing that allows us to explore the options in a feasible manner, in an efficient manner, and then going back to, you know, simulating those, those different possibilities, manufacturing those and reintegrating them in our CAD and PLM system. So the good news is that that gap between hardware capabilities and software capabilities has been enormously reduced in the past few years, thanks to certain technologies such as, let's see, implicit modeling. So what you see on the image, it's quite colorful. I find it almost artistic to be honest, but it's actually a very useful uh, technology in the background that is going to allow us to deal with this complexity much more easily. What we see there is this um, stator component that has a infill gyroid. And that gyroid actually, as we will see, it has some equations in the background defining its shape and, 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 and making it happen as we see in front of our eyes. So probably you're wondering what this implicit modeling technology means. So let's have a deeper insight into it. The goal here is to provide a robust error-free modeling technique that allows us to play with complex structure. Let's start with a very basic object, this circle, when we represent it in CAD, boundary representation software, we basically are describing some parametric equations and then we are discretizing those parametric equations. Whereas in an implicit approach, what we are doing is we are doing the volumetric description of that geometry. If you remember in high school, when you were studying implicit functions, here is a great usage of those. Why? Because let's say now we want to do a Boolean union with another object. When you are doing this with the boundary representation technique, that intersection calculation gets a bit complicated. However, when we are doing the volumetric approach, this becomes much more simple. It's just doing a minimum function between those two objects. So in many cases, this approach is going to make our life much simpler and we are going to be able to explore many more concepts. Also, it is an adapted solution when it comes to periodic structures. You see, when you are working with lattice structures that we've been discussing in other presentations, you generate a lot of information, no? a lot of surface, edges, vertices. And as you grow and grow and grow, this might become quickly uh, unbearable by CAD software. But when we are talking about implicit, it's actually the same equation periodically repeated everywhere. So we can have many more lattices without changing our file size. So it becomes much, it becomes much more manageable. But the other interesting aspect here is because we are dealing with geometry in this volumetric mathematical approach in the background, we can achieve very interesting properties in our parts. We can modify spatially our parts based on simulation or test data. For this beam, for example, you see that in those high stretch regions, we have increased the thickness of our lattice in this part. In this other result, it's a topology optimization smoothened result with implicit that not only we had the op topology optimization, but if you look closely, there's a little map. It's a stress map that is giving us the high stress and the low stress regions calculated on the topology optimization part. What we did here is we have emptied out the material automatically based on the low stress regions. Because of the connectivity of the interfaces, material has been generated in all of those areas. But that doesn't mean that we need to keep absolutely all of the material of the topology optimization. Said in another way, based on stress data on a topology optimization, we can further optimize that topology optimization. Here's one more use case. Here is a heat exchanger based on uh, columns and it, it is exposed to a heat map. So what we are trying to do here is increase the density of those columns automatically based on the thermal map. As you see in the high thermal 
loading regions, we have a much higher density of those columns. So basically I'm giving you three different ways in, in which this field driven or simulation and test data driven capability can be used. You can increase the thickness of components or you can empty out components where low stress values are present or you can do things like increasing the density of a lattice with the same thickness depending on some data. So hopefully now you have seen a bit more of what is behind this implicit uh, technology and I'd like to quickly jump into software and show you in action how fast we can modify geometry. It will only take a couple of minutes and then we will jump straight to more applications that are feasible thanks to this technology. So we are going to take this engine cylinder that is designed to be cooled down with this classic fins for, for engine cylinders. And we have produced a different approach to it. So we have, instead of using those fins, we have used lightweight lattices, as you can see all across the volume. But I was telling you that we can modify with implicit technology, uh, the, the structure spatially based on data. So I brought a few different sets of data here. For example, I brought this stress map based on, you know, the a simulation of those lattices because at the intersections, because of the thermal expansions, etc., we are going to have higher stresses accumulated. What we did here is we took those high stress values and we automatically thickened our lattice based on that data. So you see that in the, in the borders where we had the high stress values, we are able to automatically increase the thickness. But now, if instead of this stress, I want to use this thermal pattern because I want to dissipate more heat by conduction in, in the nearby region of the cylinder. I want to increase the thickness of the lattice. You see, I can go ahead and drop that in as the new field that I want to use. And very quickly, we are able to change our design to adapt to those different physics. So you see, now we have a thicker lattice exactly in the high temperature region. But of course, if we want to account for both effects, the thermal heat, the thermal dissipation, and also the high stress at the intersection between the lattices and the frame, we can go ahead and add both effects at the same time and then drag that as my new input and then we will have a lattice that is thickened in both the, therm the high thermal regions and the high stress regions. So this, as you, as you can imagine at this point, this opens a lot of possibilities in terms of design exploration and design optimization that before maybe they seem to be uh, too laborious to even think about them and now they are actually feasible in matters of seconds. All right, and then we get our final design that accounts for both effects. And now I'll be going back to the presentation. So I just wanted you to quickly witness implicit modeling live. Okay, so just a quick summary of this case that was actually manufactured and used in a UAV uh, vehicle. So we uh, highly optimize a lattice with spatially varying properties based on multi-physics data to replace the old heavier fin design. And actually we did this based on temperature. I didn't show it in the example because I want to go quickly, but we can also take things like uh, velocity vector fields and, and pressure drops to not only vary the thickness of the lattice, but, uh, but as I showed you before with, with the other heat exchanger, uh, we can vary the geometry of the lattice or the density of the lattice. 
We also accounted for the mechanical stresses. So hopefully at this point, you feel a bit more comfortable with this whole implicit modeling and field-driven design methodology and what kind of benefits it can bring. So I think it's time that we jump to another example of application that I find extremely interesting and that again is enabled thanks to this implicit uh, technology. Here we see a new generation heat exchanger that with respect to its parent, a shell and tube uh, heat exchanger, we got reduced a 40% its mass while increasing the surface area 146% and even the lifespan of the object got increased to five years thanks to the design consolidation and the wall thicknesses used and the compactness of the design. We did a different example as well with some partners where we, again, we, compare, we, we can see here how we have decreased by 85% the volume of the heat exchanger while keeping the same, um, the same uh, surface area exchange. And we have decreased the number of parts from 40 to one single part. So again, that uh, assembly consolidation that we were talking at the beginning, is, um, it can be seen here very clearly. Okay. If anyone is curious, these heat exchangers were manufactured with uh, aluminum 7060L and in an EOS M290 machine. Okay, so again, the nice thing about implicits is we can deal with complexity very easily, and that allows us to do things like characterizing the behavior of these lattice structures that we're using. More specifically, these are gyroid structures. They, are, they have great benefits, as many of you probably know, because they are self-supporting while being lightweight and they have a very high strength to weight ratio. So those are great advantages, but yet for this flow application, we need to keep a certain amount of surface area exchange and pressure drop values to be respected. So with implicit, we are able to quickly modify all of those geometries and we can take those to CFD, we can mesh them and get the fluid regions, take them to CFD, and we can calculate how much pressure drop and how much uh, increase in surface area we get, which allows us to make actually optimized design decisions. So we can speed up much more these processes for uh, exploring possibilities of complex geometries for many applications. It's not only about the characteristics of the gyroid, but also we can quickly modify the interfaces with the inlets and the outlets. For example, here, uh, originally, we thought about doing these baffles in this way, which was giving us some unnecessary circulation and wasted energy that was provided clearly by the CFD simulation. But the final design that we chose was keeping the energy of the flow much more nicely. We had, an, we had improved that energy distribution and then we decreased the pressure drop. So, of course, uh, it's, the, the nice thing is this implicit technology is mature enough to be part of real workflows. We can take those designs as, we, as I just showed you, we can analyze them in CFD, we can analyze also the stress results and then we can go ahead and, and build those and, and then test them. As you can see here, we actually tested this part. We even ran some burst duct text test and we have very nice results on this. We can span, scan the part, inspect it, and then compare the, what, what we actually manufactured, what performance it has, and compare it with the initial design. So we have gone quite far in these next generation heat exchangers, which are essential components for many machines and in the aerospace industry, they're essential to, to all thermal management systems. But there's even more applications that I, I would like to show you. Not that much in detail because we don't have that much time today. Of course, if, you are, if later you're interested in any of the applications I'm about to show you, please reach out to, to me after the conference and I'm happy to, to disclose more information with you. So one example here is this, um, a, this satellite bus that actually was manufactured, you see in a classic stamped process. And now 
with additive manufacturing, we can do this gyroid infuel that one more time has very nice strength to weight ratio properties and very lightweight. So as you can imagine from what you've seen before, designing this is not a hard task anymore. So we can really use these infields for components and saving a lot of weight in space components or aerospace components, airplane components of any kind. Other types of applications are topology optimization. This is done by a lot of software. Implicit, the added value here is it will allow you to smoothen that topology optimization automatically. And as I showed previously, you can variable sh variably shell it to remove material in the low stress regions after. Everything that is periodic structure works very nicely. We can, we can periodically rip different type, types of components. The rocket nozzle that we discussed at the very beginning, we can uh, take other components like an engine component or a um, pressure vessel that we see here in the middle on the screen, and we can reduce their thickness while providing these conformal lattices that are manufacturable. Other applications, uh, for APUs, auxiliary power units of airplanes, uh, we can create these uh, housings that have internal cooling channels, which allows to reduce its, its weight and to increase its thermal performance and its durability. We can do things like uh, for engine components, like fuel injectors, we can investigate different lattice alternatives very quickly to see how we can atomize the best the fuel when being injected. Another very interesting application, uh, engine fuel filters. So with additive manufacturing, we can uh, obtain very, very uh, interesting uh, structures. We can easily iterate on different possibilities and compare the benefits in terms of surface area to volume versus uh, how much pressure we are dropping, how much um, volume, sorry, how much pressure the fuel is losing when passing through the filter. To give you an example, you have two minutes left. Yeah. So to give you an example, uh, in this case, we see that hexagonal honeycomb sort of structure works very nicely, whereas uh, in terms of not losing pressure, but uh, it's not the best one when it comes to actually performing the filtering function. So we can do these sort of comparisons very easily. We can take all technology in terms of, for example, hydraulic clamps, and we can do things like optimizing them topologically, smoothening them, and we can qualify them and analyze them after. So you see, it's quite a, a bunch of applications that are possible with implicit modeling. So to sum it up, we are living in very exciting times because additive manufacturing and modern analysis tools enable the use of topology optimization, complex lattice structures, and now we have the same freedom for unprecedented power complexity. Of course, we still have some uh, limitations in terms of manufacturability that we need to overcome, but definitely we have done a big step forward. And this implicit geometry generation is following that new complexity that is possible by giving you a scalab scalable and, and fast process to do these design iterations while completely controlling your geometry based on data. But of course, this is not ending here. We have some continued efforts. We still need to characterize many of the lattice structures for many of these applications, the fluid properties within these structures. We need to still uh, assess the robustness of many of these uh, in disruptive, innovative designs. And of course, as many of uh, the, the other presenters said today, qualification and certification of materials and manufacturing processes, as well as of these architected lattice structures is crucial to the will be crucial to uh, the adoption of all of this type of design and manufacturing technology. So I would just like to give, leave you with a quick thought, which is once upon a time, we could generate CAD models that we could not manufacture. More recently, we were able to manufacture parts that we could not design. And now we've reached a convergence where both are only limited by our imagination. So what have you been imagining that is now finally possible.